Lieutenant Dawson, I understand you on leave of absence. I do, Colonel. I heard from my father today, and it seems that some sheep herder shot him. I don't know how serious it is, but I would like to go home and see if an outsider can't establish a truce in that range war. Hmm. Not a bad idea. While you're down there, Lieutenant Dawson, if you can clear up that Lobo Valley trouble, you'll be doing the government a mutton service. I hadn't realized the trouble between the cattlemen and sheepmen at their attention, sir. I've been asked to send troops down there if it gets any worse. That's how important Washington thinks it is. All right. Take an immediate leave and uh, stay as long as necessary. Thank you, sir. I'll do my best. I know you will. And I have every confidence in your ability. Do you want anything from here? Yes. I'll need some help. I was thinking of that medicine show outfit we used on that scouting trip last year, sir. Colonel. <laughs> From the message which just came by way of the feather duster, I suppose you'll want Doc Flanders. Uh, you didn't know I served in the Signal Corps, too, did you? Well, no, sir. <laughs> that is, yes, sir. I would like Doc Flanders. I don't think I'll need anyone else. Well, you were successful enough before. When do you want to start? Just as soon as possible. Got a mule, such a fool, he never pays no heed. I build a fire beneath that mule, and then he shows some speed. Oh, go along, mule, don't you roll him eyes. You can change a fool, but a dog on mule is a mule until he dies. <laughs> Aches and restless pains got married down in game. And now they say the Georgia woods are full of little aches and pain. Oh, go long, you. Don't go, am I? You can change your food, but a dog on you is a mule until he dies. I bought some biscuits. My dog and put them on the shelf. Time's got so hard I shot the dog and ate them up myself. Oh, go long, you don't go am I. You can change your food, but a dog on you is a mule until he dies. In Georgia, pulled a gun and took a shot at me. And when he fired the second shot, I was going through Tennessee. Oh, go long, you don't throw him high. You can change your food, but a dog gone you the mule until he Forks, which one do we take? Take that one to the right, to a camp spot alongside the creek. And then on down about a mile is the old home ranch. Come on, Doc, let's go. Yeah! Ah! This is a right pretty country, ain't it? Look at all them cattle over there. I can't see the brand from here, but I think those are some of my dad. You know, they haven't started running sheep on this side of the river. How do you know that? Well, that's part of our trouble, Doc. You see, after the sheep get done with the spread, they, they crop it so close that no self-respecting cow will graze on it. And it spoils the land for the cattle. So that's what it's all about. Yeah, and besides that, it's government land. The cattlemen claim priority. The sheepmen say that they have equal rights and won't stand for any contention. Well, there's something to that argument. <laughs> Between you and me, it makes a great deal of difference which side you're born in. <laughs> hey, look, over there. Oh, I'm sure 
you're born. Drat them. Whoa, whoa. What's that look like to you, Doc? A scene in the old cookhouse where the boys are throwing cobs on the fire and the cook is standing there uh, cooking steaks. Nice, juicy, tender steer. Well, that's our south meadow where we used to stack our winter hay supply. Where are you going? Stay here. Someone set the haystacks on fire and they're heading this way. Uh, you keep on going down this road till you come to the main trail. Where'll you be? That's the cutoff. I'm going that way. Yes! Hi Okay. Put this line up, will you? Oh. That's it. How? 
that's what I'd like to know. Well, of all the stupid... I'd say you were a drunken cowboy. Oh, no, man. That's the way I drop in on all my friends. Sort of impromptu, like, you know. Uh, I take it you don't like cowboys. I hate them. We're running sheep on this part of the range. The cattlemen resent it, and, well, they've made it mighty tough for us. So what are you, anyway? Me? Why, I'm the advance agent for one of the finest medicine shows that ever played this neck of the woods. Is the sheriff after you? Yeah, but if he was aiming to hang me, you almost beat him to it. Oh, stand still till I get this roof off. You know, but the holiday got on me, ma'am. I could be tied a lot tighter around here and, and not be bothered much. Oh. We worked all day to finish this wash, and now look at it. Dear. You know, if there was any way I could get this wash and clean again, I'd sure admire to do it. Oh, that sounds likely. No, I mean it. Why, Joe, I thought you were over the line cabin. I didn't go. I've been waiting here. Something I want to have out with you, Ed. All right, I'm listening. No, for quite a spell, things ain't been going straight. We've been partners a long time. We've run quite a spread of sheep together, but I'm honest. Meaning I ain't? I followed you up here. Saw the smoke over Dawson's haystacks. So you sneak in here just now, and uh, you have that outfit on. Well, what about it? This ain't the first time you've gone riding out like this. June's beginning to worry about it, too. You've both got no cause to be concerned. I know what I'm doing. This range belongs to the government, don't it? Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to graze our sheep wherever we like on it. I ain't saying you can't. But I am saying I'm dead set against violence. Especially when feelings are running high the way they are now. And besides, I don't see what can be gained from starting a war. I don't see any cattlemen offering to share their spread with you. Or any lawmen fighting your battles. You're a sheepman. Sure, I'm a sheepman. If the sheepman and the cattlemen can run this range in peace and prosperity, unless there's a range war, then they'd both be bankrupt. And that's just what somebody is trying to start. What would I gain by doing that? Nothing. But the man you're working for would. What do you mean, the man I work for? You know what I mean. I've kept still too long. From now on, we're through as partners. You can buy me out, or I'll buy you out. That suits me if you want it that way. Make up your mind which way you want it and name the price. And in the meantime? Unless I'm forced to, I'll forget what I've seen. Never round in cattle, never get a chance, wash and clothes all day, just a mother's helper. It's my daily battle, washing socks and shirts, don't get any pay, just a daily battle. Don't mind washing hankies or even ladies' homes, but what is this, oh gosh, oh gee, I have no use for those. Never round in cattle, never get a chance, washing clothes all day, just a mother's helper. Well, I never heard of a medicine show rushing over the range looking for a customer. And don't you believe me? No, I didn't mean <laughs> that. Something tells me my medicine show is going to be right here. Oh, I heard that. Ladies, I want you to meet the first great and only knight of Materia Medica to prowl these parts in the interest of science, to bring peace and joy to the ailing and tender mercy to the aged. I want you to meet a good doctor and a friend to all mankind. My boss, Doc Flanders. Take a bow down. Yeah. Howdy, ladies. Howdy. It's a great pleasure. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to make amends for uh, uh, messing up the ladies' laundry here today, Doc, and in a weak moment, I promised Pocahontas here 
A string of black and white beads. Beads? Yeah, beads. Oh, beads. Oh, oh, of course, my boy, of course, yeah. that black horse over there? I have a gift of second sight. A few minutes ago, a man in black was riding him hard. Oh, oh, you saw my father's partner, Ed Brandt. He always rides fast. <laughs> Here's your beads, black and white, as ordered. It tastes like candy and looks like glass and works like a charm. Makes the old feel younger and the young feel older. Good for cold feet, hot headaches, and uh, all kinds of misery. Only a dime, ten cents, one tenth part of a dollar. You're just in time. You'll have to get in line now. There's only a few more left. Only a dime, ten cents, one tenth part of a dollar. You'll have now, to get in line. Now, wait a minute, Doc. Wait a minute. You're not selling these. So I'm giving them away. And now that'll make the squaw a nice string of beads. Oh, wait a minute. You don't eat them. You wear them. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, she'll like them. <laughs> Say, do we camp here? No, upstream. Stop by when you're over this way again. All right. We'll make a next wash day. <laughs> yeah. Those shots I heard back there. Your black rider took a shot at me when he passed. Uh -huh. Shucks, I found myself looking right down. Any damage? Busted and I owned all the medicine bottles I had on me. Probably saved your life, Doc. No, I busted them myself for getting out of his way. <laughs> well, okay. We've got plenty of work ahead of us tonight. If you need any more money to replace that winter fee, we'll stop in the... Thanks, Jason. Hello, Dad. Why, Fred, you old skin. <laughs> How are you? Hello, Mr. Jason. Fred, I'm sure glad to see you. Well, Dad, it's certainly great to see you up and around. Hey, have you got any idea who shot you? No, I haven't. But, uh, look here. What do you make of that? Hey, that's a creased mushroom bullet. Well, I don't know the answer. Looks like these sheepmen are on the wall path. They burned my winter hay today. Yes, and it'd likely been a lot worse if it wasn't for your cattlemen's vigilantes. They're on the job night and day. We mean business. Now, wait a minute, Dad. I think this can be settled without guns. Well, I kind of figured that way myself. There's room enough here for both cattle and sheep. But somebody is deliberately trying to ruin us. Run us cattlemen out. What your father says is true enough. Yes, there's somebody behind all this a lot more important than a handful of sheep. Mm -hmm. Hey, I kind of expected to see you in uniform. <laughs> Those sort of clothes must mean something. <laughs> they certainly do. Gentlemen, I'm advance agent, entertainer, and assistant to old Doc Flanders and his medicine show. <laughs> old Doc, huh? <laughs> <laughs> We're camped down by the cottonwood. Uh, I figure that in a week around here, Doc and I can figure out about who's behind all this. Well, boys, I've got to go. I'll be seeing you from time to time. I suppose you'll keep in touch with your father. 
Yes, whenever I can get back in here at night without being seen. <laughs> well, good night. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, Jason. Okay. Hey, Fred, I'm kind of worried. Then any sheepmen find out you're my son, you'll be running into a mighty dangerous situation. I don't think so. You know, Dad, all those sheepmen came here after I left home. That's true enough, but still you might be recognized. Don't you worry about that. No, well, I try not to. Steady now. Steady, hold. Steady now. Steady. There you are. Yes, sir, mister. Tomorrow morning that sheep will be just as good as new. A friend to man and beast is old Doc Flanders. Now, I've got medicine that's good for dyspepsy, dizzy spells, night sweats, flat feet, and fallen arches. But that's the only sheep that I got that's sick. Oh, yes, of course. Pardon me. I should have mentioned. I meant medicine for you and your wife and family. Well, we can't afford to get sick. After seeing all those sheep out there, I should think you folks could afford most anything you wanted. Well, we hope to own them by a fall, but right now they belong to the Livestock Raisers Association. Yes, and who might they be? It's a Chicago concern, a packing company. But they got loans on most of the livestock hereabouts. Well, how much will be, Doc? Well, now, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> we're getting mighty low on fresh meat. Well, I could give you a little mutton. Oh, no, no. I got a better idea. Wait a minute. Here you are. Here's two bottles of Doc Flanders all-year medicine. Directions written right on the bottle. Uh, <clears throat> I heard some chickens in that shed off there. Two hens, and we'll call the deal square. It's a deal, Doctor. How are you on bullets, Doc? How did it happen, boy? Jack and I was riding along, minding my own business, and uh, I heard a shot, and the next thing I knew, I was rolling in the dust. Get some hot water and some clean white rag. Hurry. It's a good boy. Them skulking cattlemen. Get that boiling water, will you? Right away. Say, Doc, he's hurt bad. We better get a doctor. Yeah, we... Oh, shucks. He ain't hurt bad. He's lost a lot of blood, but the bullet just plowed around his ribs without busting anything. Now then, son, I'm going to burn your ribs with uh, Doc Flanders' germ killer. Then I'm going to rub on some of this here Doc Flanders' miracle salve, and a couple of days from now, you won't even have a scar. Hold him, Fred. Two chickens, a sack of eggs, and a can of lard. <laughs> Not bad, even if we did have to work all night for it. No, that ain't all, Doc. Look at this piece of paper I got out of that kid's pocket. What do you make of it? Well, I'll tell you better tonight. Doc, I'd sure like to have the other piece of paper that was torn from. Right, that's the place. You got your orders straight? Yep. Yeah, I'll signal you when I'm ready. You're acting like a scared bunch of your own sheep. Why, we've got as much right to this range as them range hogs. That's right, sir. Right. Yeah. You bet. You're gonna go home and admit these cattlemen that got you licked? I'm with you, Ben. No cattleman's gonna drive me from this range. And you're ready to put on a raid that is a raid, huh? We're with you. Let's get going. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not so fast. Now, here's the layout. They're not expecting us. The first man that moves gets plugged. Ha! If you listen to that fool branch, you'll all be wiped out.
<laughs> well, they don't. They won't do much raiding without their horses. Shucks, we took them like shooting fish, didn't yeah. we? Now we know where Brandt is, but uh, if Allison was with his sheep, that'll give us a chance to go through Brandt's room and pick up any stray pieces of paper. And sing a few songs in the parlor. Well, that's not a bad idea. Come on. Father home? Oh, no, but I imagine he'll be along any minute. Won't you sit down? Well, uh, Doc and I just dropped over to see how that lamb was doing. You know, we're mighty worried about that sick lamb, aren't we, Doc? Yeah. Oh, well, isn't it nice to find people so interested in their work? Well, why don't you run along out and see for yourself? Well, <clears throat> now, if it's all the same to you, ma'am, I won't be needing Fred. So if you let him stay here and rest up a spell, why, he could be downright entertaining on that there guitar over there. Uh, don't play so loud, you might scare the sheep now. Well, well isn't that flattering? <laughs> you know, Miss June, uh, Doc doesn't seem to realize what a great singer I am. Oh, well, maybe he hasn't heard you on wash day. <laughs> oh, you mean my wash day song? Well, I've got a better one to sing tonight. Uh, you know, Miss June, I've got a little confession to make to you. Uh, that lamb isn't really as sick as Doc pretends. Oh, well, I have a confession to make, too. Yeah. I only pretended the lamb was sick in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I turned him out yesterday. <laughs> trying to peddle your pills around here, huh? Get out. Get off this ranch and stay off. Why, Ed? And if I ever catch you talking to June again... Now, wait a minute, mister. 
Let's leave Miss June out of this. After all, that's her business. Well, I'm making it mine. You sneaking pill pusher. I'm sorry, Miss June. I'll be seeing you any time you want to see me. You think you will? I know I will, mister. I'm only sorry that this had to happen before you. Good night. to do something. I thought so. Sounds like old times. How much? <laughs> no, it isn't money. It's about this range war. Well, what do you want done? I want you to give a barbecue next week. Every cattleman and sheepman to be invited. I'll be there with the medicine show. All right. Why? Well, there's several reasons. And one is there's no reason why you cattlemen and sheepmen can't be friends and neighbors. Mm -hmm. Now, you're fair. And I found that most of them are too, Dad. Mm -hmm. And the other reasons you're not telling. Well, those reasons will come out when we get the men together. Well, I'm willing to try anything once. I'll write out the invitation. Help some of the boys deliver them. Good. I say, by the way, this shindig had better be held at Jason. The banker's place will be neutral ground for both sides. Well, that's a good idea. You know, I think that might work. Trying to get the cattlemen and the sheepmen together, huh? More tricks. This means the end of tricks. This is what I hoped could happen. You mean it gives you a chance to wag your tongue? Look here, Brent. You've been paid off and the sheep belong to me. If I'm called on tomorrow and I find it necessary, I'm going to tell all I know. I made a bargain and I'll stick to it. But I'm warning you. You forget what you know. And don't be fool enough to talk. When I come back from the meeting, I expect to find you gone. Bringing the sheepmen and cattlemen together don't seem right to me, Dawson, even for a barbecue. It's dynamite. Well, dynamite ain't so bad until you put a cap and fuse to it. You can't settle disputes between a lot of people unless you get them all together. And if there's any feeling here between sheepmen and cattlemen, it doesn't affect their appetites any. And a 
do believe I'd up and die Yippee, yippee, I If I had to leave Come on, folks, everybody Now, just like you meant it Come on, put your heart into it, no In old Montana Turn the for long And the cowboys high Yippee, yippee, I When we sing a song In old Montana Guess getting them together wasn't so bad. My father used to say you could always travel safely where there was music. Pretty good idea, Fred, huh? Getting them to singing? Yeah. It'd be all right if you could keep them singing. So peaceful throughout the golden days in all Montana. And I do believe Cattlemen have chosen. Come into the house and sit down and do a little friendly and serious talking while the women clean up for the dancing. Now, now, if the rest of you will go right down to the south pasture behind Mr. Jason's barn, we're going to have all the races and the hog calling contest. And we're going to start out with the toe sack race. So everybody just go right around that way. They're all waiting for us. Jack, you think we ought to take a look at them guns? Oh, I wouldn't, Doc. It's kind of a dangerous thing to do. Not for me, it ain't. And say, listen, by the way, you better stay out of the way of that Indian squaw. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Nice gun, fine balance. Yeah, it's mine. Oh, is it? Oh, fine shooting gun, I'll bet. It's a swell shooting gun. Get anything. How about you and me taking a little walk over at the house? Well, now, I did think now, that... Now, that's it's... just fine. With respect, Jim Dawson here. So I'm going to ask him to kind of preside at this meeting. You want me, just call out. I'll be in my office. <clears throat> Men, I kind of figure we can settle our differences peaceably. So uh, let's start talking. How about you, Abe? Got anything on your mind? <clears throat> oh, just a minute. I'll take some of that. Oh, all right. Is that any good? I made it myself. Then it ought to be all right. Here's to us, June. And here's hoping the trouble between the cattlemen and the sheepmen will be finished today. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful? Certainly would. You know, coming over here, Dad said he knew what was causing the trouble and he was going to stop it today. By the way, where's Brant? I haven't seen him around. Oh, well, I'm worried about that. He had a terrible quarrel with Dad last night. It wasn't about seeing me again, was it? Oh, no. No, he didn't want Dad to come here today. Well, I wouldn't let that worry you. All right, well, I got work to do. <laughs> you and your night Riders shot my boy. Now you want to be my friends. I'll die fighting first. What was your son doing out the night he was shot? Cutting my fences. Here, yeah, maybe these wire cutters are yours. Wait a, wait a minute, man. I know the man who organized these sheep raiding parties. Why he did it, and the man who's making him do it. We've all been victims of a plot to steal our sheep ranches. Our cattle ranches. We've been thrown at each other's throats. And the man who's responsible and behind it all is... Wait a minute, back up. Give me here, give me here, let me in, let me in. What was that shot? Where was you when it was fired? Why, outside here? Maybe he was outside that window. Was anybody with you? 
Not when the shot was fired. I thought not. Sheriff, this fellow's been snooping around the range for a week. A few minutes ago, I couldn't. Why, I am unarmed. There's lots of places you could have thrown your guns. <laughs> Why, my guns are over in the medicine wagon. Go take a look. But you stay right here. He's hit pretty bad. I'll do what I can for him while you send a man for his regular doctor. You go, Chuck. And on your way, ask the sheriff to come in. Don't worry, miss. He'll pull through all right. Oh. Well, we've got our man. He was close to that window when the shot was fired. He admits that these are his guns. This one has just been used. Sure. If my gun was used, somebody else used it. What reason would he have for shooting Allison? Allison was about to name a night rider, and I reckon he's been doing plenty of that the past week. Why, man, I've known this young man since he was born. He couldn't do a thing like that. You don't know him. Why, this is Fred Dawson, Jim Dawson's son. A cattleman, eh? Well, that explains Wait a minute. Get over there. You too. Doc, do your best. Listen, man. I didn't shoot Allison, but I'll shoot any man that tries to stop me. You stay inside this house till I'm out of sight. What are you doing here? I came to ask about your father. How's your father, June? Well, he's still unconscious. The doctor said it might be several days before we knew. I'm sure sorry. We've been combing the hills for young Fred Dawson. Lost the trail just above here. He was headed this way. Well, you don't think he'd come here, do you? Well, it does seem hard to believe. Well, good night, miss. Good night. That was nice of you, June. I didn't expect it from you. You didn't expect this from me, either. You look like a sneaking, cowardly murderer to me. Don't move. Why didn't you turn me over to the sheriff? You should be able to figure that out. June, I didn't shoot your father. I'm after the man who did. All I want is a chance. Did you give him a chance? What are you going to do? Just what you did to my father. 
If you think I can do that, go ahead and shoot. I can't. I didn't do it, June. What are you fellas doing here, Sheriff? We trailed Fred Dawson right to the house. June hadn't seen him, but he can't be very far away. We found his horse tied up right over there. Goodbye, June. Take care of your father. The killer who doesn't want him to talk hasn't been captured yet. Don't try for your guns, Fred. Well, you didn't see Fred Dawson. What's the idea, June? Well, I don't think he shot my father. Well, the rest of us do. That'll do for you, Brant. This is not a necktie party. You'll get a fair trial, Fred. Take his guns. Get this, boys. Fred Dawson's in jail. Now, if he talks, we are goners. We've got to stop him from going to trial. I want you to get out and round with the boys. Let them know that young Dawson is sneaking among us, posing as our friend, but shoots one of us down in cold blood. We're going to send them cattlemen our answer right now. And let them understand that hanging's too good for him. It's going to be a killing for a killing before they beat us to it and take him away from here. Now remember, work fast. All right, come on, let's go. <laughs> I took you that time. Yeah. I'll pay you another. Uh, say, huh? ain't it about time the sheriff was due back? Well, I'd say so. I don't see why they called him out to old man Allison's ranch in the first place. Unless he's dead. Well, I hope not. Uh, I give it as I forgot. You wouldn't know. Uh, them darn fly. Uh, you'll move first. Don't move. Don't move. I give you that bounded that and all right. Your move, son. Yes, it makes you kind of nervous talking about Allison dying. Yes, I am kind of nervous, yeah. yeah hey, that's mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You go to pieces faster than any feller I ever saw. You play worse than a baby. You know, a person would think that you was scared. Well, it wouldn't take a necktie party long to break in here, would it? No, oh, sure. They wouldn't do that unless an Allison's dead. And if he is, what's the difference when you get home? Now or later on? <laughs> sure move, son. You're telling me. Say, hey, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you beat me, I'll teach you a song you never heard before. Your own. All right. Oh, hello, June. Come in. Oh, Mr. Dawson. What Ed, happened? Well, Ed Brandt's got a gang of sheepmen together. They're on the way to break in the jail and get Fred. I was afraid something like this would happen. We've got to round up every cattle man we can find. Oh. <laughs> Don't you 
find out, Slick, me, didn't you? Now, come on, let's hear that song. Oh, all right, old timer. I played the bull fiddle myself. Now, who pretended he was tough until somebody called his bluff? Who? Rattlesnake Joe. Now, who's the cheat in every game who never wants to take the blame? Who? Rattlesnake Joe. Now, he steals cattle from the range and then reports the loss and puts the blame on someone else and tells it to the boss. Now, who's the guy who always gives his pal the double cross? Who? Rattlesnake Joe. Now he'd go rustling with Come a friend. Come on, Beach, time's up. He would say, who? <laughs> Rattlesnake Joe. Why, he would steal a buddy's hat. He's just a crooked brother rat. Who? Rattlesnake Joe. Now he's the guy that hid the cattle way down in the past. And when it comes to dirty work, he's voiced in every class. For he's the snake they talk about that you find in the grass. Who? Rattlesnake Now one day something happened strange where someone made a sudden change. Rattlesnake Joe. Yeah, for then he did a noble deed and came to help a friend in need. Who? Not Rattlesnake Joe. Oh, yes. He found the dusty peak was broken, couldn't pay his bill. And who's the guy that walked right up and said, Pete, I will? He paid the bill, then held them up, and then he robbed the till. Who? Rattlesnake Joe. Yes, you Now, who's the guy came back for more and acted slow upon the draw? Who? Rattlesnake Joe. And who's the guy fell on the floor and says, I'm shot, boys, I'm done for? Who? Rattlesnake Joe. He said, now, boys, I must confess before my life is through that I'm the guy that shot the man that's known as Dan McGrew. McGrew, he held for aces, and who held for aces, too? Who? That is Nate Joe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. hey, Joe. There they go. Never mind the medicine man.
might as well give up. We get you cornered. Talk? Not yet, I won't. Are you ready to talk now? Yeah, I'm through. Hold it! Right where you are! Where's Fred? Right here, Dad. Mr. Brand's got something he wants to tell you. He's a very hard man to get anything out of, but after a little tactful questioning, I think he's ready to talk. I shot Dawson. Yes, and you used mushroom bullets, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, you'll find his gun right over there. You can examine it. You'll find the bullets creased. And then, Mr. Brandt, you shot Allison. No. No, I, I didn't do that. I swear I didn't. Well, you ought to be killed. You'd like to see me where I couldn't talk, wouldn't you? Well, you shot Allison. You shot him because he found out that you had me in so in debt that I had to carry out your orders. You wanted a battle start between the cattle and sheepmen, didn't you? Then you'd foreclose on the ones you broke. What? That's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, oh, no. It's the truth. I've known it ever since I found a piece of paper with some little brand marks scratched on it. You know, that habit of doodling, Jason, tripped you up. And I've been waiting for Brant to help me hang you. You'll never hang me. Oh, yes, we will. Fred, Allison has accused Brant and Jason, and I'm here to get them. A little late, Sheriff, but... I guess from now on, it's your party. All right, men. Let's go. Oh, I thought we'd never get here. I'm so glad. Well, I'm glad your father's feeling better. I sure will be glad to get back to the Army. Although I will admit it's kind of nice here in May. <laughs> Doc, I'll take June every time. Oh. Can I depend on that? Lady, that's practically a proposal. 